Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio presented by Celebs.com up here at Sundance. Jason, Eduardo, Simon, Adam, Greg. Wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. Thank you, thank you. Very nice. Okay, let's end it there. That was just uh, so uh, who I mean, are you? Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you know, coming back here, SVHS, super style. Um, you know, you guys, you know the territory, you've been here. How's your relationships, how have they changed since last time you were up here? Are you, uh, do you feel like last time was more experimental and this time was kind of trying to amp it to another level? Or, uh, or is it like, can we, can, can we pull this off again? I mean, the cool thing about like having made um, you know, a film like VHS, which, which just came out kind of commercially, but we went to a lot of festivals with it, is you get to have like the audience testing experience, like with all kinds of different audiences all over you know, the country or the world, again and again and again. So you know, we've seen how the movie plays, you know, two in the afternoon and at like one in the morning with an audience that is 100% drunk. Um, and we kind of got to see like, okay, like people are responding to this, they're not responding so much to that. And you know, like, like we've learned a lot from making VHS, you know, let's, 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 uh, let's get some filmmakers that, you know, we personally admire involved and, and try to kind of make a film based on those lessons, try to do something much, you know, that, that to us feels stronger. Did, in, in terms of the initial thing of just getting you guys together, I mean, logistically, how do you make that happen? Do you Skype or is it like, or do you just kind of hang out in the same place? Do you watch movies together? If you're, if you're Jason, you just don't even respond to your email, I guess. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I remember like the one phone call we all had, and yeah. I was in my driveway, and it was just like, it was kind of a disaster of a phone call. Yeah. It was just talking, like, there was like 10 people yeah. on the phone. <laughs> but it, was, yeah. it was a super easy, I mean, because, you know, Ed and I did ours, kind of stand alone away from everybody else just because we're not in the same state. Yeah. Uh, and it was the really the easiest yeah. process because you know everybody liked the script and the notes were good and concise and you get that taken care of then you move on to the production part of it and everybody's filmmakers so the notes are everybody knows what you can do in the notes process they know how to give notes um, so it was really logistically it was it was super easy. Yeah and the way that we do this thing is that um, you know, like, it, it's more kind of just like through emails and stuff. Like, like you said, like everybody gets the scripts and stuff from like a producing standpoint. So everybody knows what everybody's doing. And then uh, it, it's kind of up to each sort of team to go off and do their own thing. And that's the whole point of it is that it's, you know, all different people from, you know, different parts of, you know, the planet and everybody's bringing their own unique style to it and their, and their own unique, um, you know, you know, people, you know, working on their films and, and, and everybody's just kind of given the money and, uh, and, and, and they go and do it and then we all deliver and then, and, and then it's, it's just that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah not a lot of like creative, creative notes or anything. Everyone kind of has freedom to work with their own crews and deliver what they feel is a pretty much final product. Yeah, and that's what's attractive about it, I think, to everybody. Has anyone between last time and this time stolen anybody else's crew? <laughs> oh, you know, well, we, we definitely, uh, we've definitely, we're going to definitely steal uh, Gareth Evans and Timo Tajanto's uh, blood of VFX guy. Oh, man, yeah. their, their digital blood is better than anything else. Oh, and, yeah. and I literally, like, I emailed Gareth like five times before. He was like, what's his, what's his name? What's, yeah. He's some guy in Jakarta. He's got the best digital blood ever. So we are going to steal his, his crew after this film. <laughs> so i got to imagine as you guys change from watching each other's projects, from learning how each other does things slightly differently, that you do start tweaking things and perhaps become more alike than you were before. Yeah, totally. I mean, we like our, one of our sound guys was a guy who came in kind of at the last minute on the first VHS and did a really good job. So we brought him in at the very start on the sequel, you know, to like be on set, you know, like running boom, so he can make sure he got everything that he needed. You yeah, know? and then he ended up working on Jason's segment. Too, yeah. You know, and so so a little bit of that, but actually yeah. not much. Mostly, you know, like like with uh with like Greg and Eduardo, you know, they have like they've made so many films together. They have their team, and you know, we're not gonna. You know, it's, it's a good team. It is a pretty amazing assortment of films that collectively, if you look at you guys, have been involved with. And in terms of kind of almost like pioneering the found footage spectrum to, you know, reigniting Rutger Hauer's career. You know, like, <laughs> I remember the quote, you know, like that Sundance, they're like any, any Sundance where Rutger Hauer's in two films and Parker Posey's not in any, is a strange year. Yeah. You know, so, you know, Jason, it's like, well, what do you think about this whole found footage thing? I mean, the Duplass brothers just sold a found footage film to, you know, has it, is it reached a peak? Has it, has it like, wh wh where do you think it is? In, um, well, to be honest, I gotta be completely honest. Uh, before I saw uh, VHS, like I was following the buzz of the screenings that were happening here at Sundance, and I heard that it was a found footage movie. And at that time, it just the, it just kind of seemed like there was a lot of found footage movies being made, and I was kind of like ignoring it. But 
when I started hearing the reactions coming out of Sundance, I was like, okay, these guys must be on to something. And so they actually reached out to me and sent me a copy of the film. And I was just, I was blown away. Like, all the different kinds of perspective, per perspectives were just so creative. And it just, it really got me excited. And so I, I pitched them like a crazy idea thinking like, there's no way they're going to go for this. And they were totally down. And they're like, you're, you're green, like, go for it. And honestly, like, I also kind of thought too that found footage might have been maybe a, um, a little easier I, a little easy maybe but uh, it was actually like I found it to be the most difficult challenge I've ever been a part of. Is, is this also one of those things where because of the way you named the first film and because you went so retro with VHS that you can go VHS SVHS which was kind of random um, you know to like DVD Blu-ray external hard drives well, like how like how much has to be high eight <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the next, uh, you know. and is, but is there is there already talk about the next one. Because I mean, it that's seems more like a a question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 our whole thing is like, you know, with, I, think I was talking to Brad, the, you know, one of the producers, is the, the idea of like amping it up. Like, what do you do with the third one? So it's kind of like, you know, yeah, what do you do at this point? You know, because especially with horror, it has become such a franchise medium. Every, especially for producers, they're all about. You know, where's this going to go? How long are we going to have this? Everyone, you know, and each each kind of year, there's a different kind of marketing perspective. You know, the eight uh, ways to die or whatever that yeah. one was that you know a couple of you guys were involved with as well. Um, so, are you super happy to be able to be part of a franchise and build on that, or do you kind of keep wanting to go back and reinvent for each of you? I mean, for me, it's really cool just because um, doing the first one, we, we kind of didn't really have like an overall plan with the movie. And so it was kind of made up as we went along. We kind of discovered what, what kind of a found footage anthology thing was. And through doing all the film festival screenings and, and, and all that stuff, we kind of realized what audiences were responding to the most and so forth. And so it was kind of cool going into a sequel because it gave us the opportunity to kind of you know, fix all the problems that we felt like the first film had, you know, not really knowing what was going to work with it. And so, um, so from that perspective, like, doing a sequel is really awesome because cause there's more of, like, uh, you know, a, a game plan kind of set out, you know. Um, yeah. Well, and also in this kind of film, you know, it's basically, I mean, they, you know, they gave, you know, they gave, I think, all of us just such, so much freedom. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you, you come up with a cool idea and then you kind of do it. And, and, and you're not really thinking about, it's not really, a, you know, it's a sequel, but it's an anthology sequel. So mm -hmm. it doesn't have to really, like, connect, you know. Exactly. Yeah. 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 This has to be a cool film. So that's, there's a there's pretty cool, you know, pretty good amount of freedom. And that I think that was great. Mm -hmm. And what about the Sundance stamp? Because it used to be, like, you know, some guys would want to get the Fantastic Fest kind of label or the Shriek Fest or whatever. But Sundance has that air of legitimacy that kind of gives it like, okay, do we, is there almost like after a point you want to, want to, want to rebel against it? Or is it still the best place to screen a movie for midnight audiences? I, I, think, for, I think for horror films, if the horror aspect of it really works and, it, and it's going to appeal to the horror fans anyway, I think Sundance, Sundance gives you another you know, kind of audience that wouldn't normally maybe look at a horror film. So I think you've got to deliver as a horror filmmaker first and foremost, and then I think the Sundance thing just becomes a, a, yeah. a huge bonus, really. Yeah. And being from, like, in the middle of nowhere, Alabama, it's like nobody out there knows anything about film festivals except for Sundance. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, it's one of the few places that you can actually screen a movie where people all over, you know, like n middle of nowhere America will have like a reference point to what that means, you know. Do any of you still get nervous screening a film? No, I mean, especially for, like for me, like I always like talk about it, like the other day I was, I was like really sick and like one of the programmers came up to me and they're like, oh, are you, are you really nervous uh, about the screening? I was like, no, no, I'm not nervous at all. I'm, I'm just sick. And to me, it's like, it's hard to be nervous when you're in an anthology kind of thing because, you know, there's no real pressure on you individually. If they don't like your segment, it's not that big of a deal because maybe they'll like one of these other guys' segment. And the movie can kind of like, you know, uh, balance itself out like that. And people are going to like different segments yeah. anyway. So, yeah. you know, it's kind, of, it's kind of cool like that. Plus, we're always just so drunk. <laughs> yeah. So but, you can also, yeah. but then you can also be like, but something you can't do with your own film is like, you don't really know if your film is really good in your heart of hearts. Like you've got to trust other people. Yeah. But when you look at the other guy's work, you're like, look, that kicks ass. <laughs> and I don't, I don't really care if anybody else likes it because I think this is really great. But you can't yeah. necessarily 
can't always say that about your own stuff. So yeah, yeah. It kind of gives you. Um, yeah, we can experience the movie as viewers. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, most of it, yeah. which is cool. Exactly. Yeah, it is very cool because also like there are audiences that are so diehard, especially within the horror genre, obviously. That each of them have such love for at least one of you that they'll be happy with the movie. But thanks for coming in and spending a few hours today. Thank you. Have thank a fun you. time while you're up here. Yeah, thanks. thanks.